top it up there, brother? The condition of the church, the cost of the call. You know, we start, we, we start talking about the condition of the church. We, the, not the physical church. We're talking about not the, the building, but the, speak, but the church, the body of Christ. And what's, what, what's three things that uh, I'm going to hit on before I get into the scriptures is I want to define what the church has. What we're saying is one thing, but it may not be exactly what we're saying. Uh, this morning, Pastor just gave us a lot of revelation. How the Lord was just imponing, just pouring out in him, and he was uh, expressing to us what the Lord was giving him through scripture, and it was revelation. It, it means that it was lined up with what he said the word of God is. So the first word that we, I'm going to spawn on is revelation. And revelation, that go to the definition. The revealing or disclosing truth from, communi from communication with the Holy Spirit. Now, the world definition, no, no, they say a higher deity, but we know our higher deity is the Holy Spirit, meaning that it's, it's God's Spirit that's working through us, and that's Him communicating with us, that's giving us revelation of what He is saying in a saying thing, and, it, and, it, and it's going to be based on His Word. He, is, he isn't saying anything different than He has already written. That he has already said. So when we start getting truth, the truth is the revelation of the word of God that comes through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, the second one is interpretation. The action of explaining the meaning of something. That's taking what's in front of you and explaining without adding or taking away. Interpretation. We can read scripture. Now, the, the revelation of that scripture based on where you are in Christ may be different, but it don't take away from the interpretation of what the word of God says. So when we start, you know, and I don't just go tie into what I'm saying about the condition of the church. Um, the last one is perspective. The perspective, the way you see something, is how you perceive when rationalizing a said thing. Now, now, I think with this one right here, this is one that the church has gravitated to more than the interpretation and the revelation. What I mean by that is, it ain't what the word of God says, it's how I see it. Well, I see it this way. Well, I see it that way. Well, the scriptures say, it, it say everything was written, it's written for our learning. But if it's written for our learning, why is it that when the church read the scriptures, it's never what, it's always what you see. That's your interpretation of it. But the, this is in the church. This is the condition of the church, the physical church, not the building, not the true church, because the true church is all is walking, or walking according to what the scripture actually say. But inside the church, that perspective is what most people are going by. Well, I just don't see it that way. The scripture say this right. I don't see it that way. The, the man of God that you say that the Lord has placed over your life is giving you what the Lord has given him. And, and the church is saying that, I don't see it that way. That's the way you see it. Right. Everything the pastor was saying this morning, the church, he was talking about the church, the condition of the church. It's inside, it's in, it's in here. Right. That we come here and we come and listen to the word, but we only see it from an interpretation or a perspective of how huh, we see it. So that's almost like eisegesis. It's like you hear the word of God, but you're getting a different understanding from it. And when the interpretation is like eisegesis, I'm hearing the word, and I'm receiving exactly what the word said, and I'm not taking away, I'm not adding from it, but the word is what it is, and I'm going to have that truth and believe that the truth, because the word is the only thing that's going to set us free. The word is the only thing that's going to deliver us. The word is the only thing that's going to build us up. The word is it. If, it, if, if the word is not true, then we come in here in vain. That's right. You're right. So there's exegesis. Now, I, there's an the exegesis of the scripture. It's believing what you're seeing and relying upon it. Um, can we go to that scripture, bro? 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. You know, 
He said, all scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now let me read the Amplified Version what they say. The Amplified say that all scriptures are breathed, given by divine inspiration, and is proper for instruction, for conviction of sin. For conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience, for training in righteousness, learn to live in conformity to God's will. Learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, outfitted, and thoroughly equipped for every good work. So even the scriptures, when we start talking, we're we, we talking about a condition in the church, where even we're reading the scriptures, the scriptures say that all scriptures are divinely inspired. All scriptures are divinely inspired, but we in the church, our perspective, because we, 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 we refuse to change our perspective and, go, and, and get into the interpretation of the scripture, that the scripture almost become non effect because we don't believe everything that God works. We have people that we are lined up and tied ourselves to that don't believe that the Bible is God's word. Well, I don't believe what Paul said is right here, but it's still inspired by God. But they don't want to see what Paul said in that context. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in that right there. But then you will take what Matthew say over here. And I'll receive what Matthew say because it, it, but it's the same spirit, same Holy Ghost that given both of them the same interpret that he spoke through both of the man of God. We don't want to believe the Bible for his entirety. But then what's the difference between going on a job or we studied for years and years to get this degree and you got to be equipped with that book. You, you can't go different than what was already taught in this book right here because somebody that put them words in there and you're going to believe that word but then when it's come down to the word of God we got a problem with the word of God so I don't understand it's a condition in the church that is not biblical it's not biblical and we are lining ourselves with people with that kind of mentality and then you start wondering why now you come to Bible study or you come around other people well, I don't really see it that way. You done change your mind to see it. Right. They done change your mind on what the word say because you want to see it for what it is. The word is speaking, but your perspective on it is, well, this is my opinion. This, well, it, well, that's your opinion how you see it. Well, there is no opinion in what's true. Right. What's true is true. Absolutely. God has not changed his mind for when he spoke it. When he came on, when he put on flesh and came on the world and, and, and walked it out, he hasn't changed his mind. And the Holy Ghost that he said that it's going to remind us of who he is hadn't changed. He hadn't changed. But the perspective of the church, the perspective of the people have allowed something to taint their ability to go back to the interpretation. Because if we get the interpretation wrong, then we'll never get a revelation. We all will be stuck on your own opinion, and your opinion will be your revelation, and it may not be true. That's right. That's a, that's a, that's on anything. You could take that whether it be spiritually, or if I go to a, I'm not gonna go to a doctor office. A doctor tell me I gotta take this kind of medicine right here, and I'm gonna tell him, doctor, you don't know what you're talking about. That ain't my, that ain't my field. You gonna, you gonna do what he tell you to do because you know he done went to school for this year. He didn't study for it. You, you got faith and confidence in the doctor. But we don't have faith in the one who said he'll heal you of everything. His word. Right. I done been around people that does that. They have more faith in the what people say than what the word of God say. They always come when your when your perspective and your condition is messed up. The first thing you gonna say, but when they put that but in there, it takes away the word. It takes away because now you finna give your opinion, and if your opinion and if your your interpretation of what the scripture said don't align back up with what the word is saying, <laughs> then you are in error. So if you stay that way, then you, that it's highly impossible for a person to be in error and then jump in truth. You're in error, but you jump in truth. 
No, you, you got to choose. Either, either we're going to receive the word and receive it with gladness, with joy, that the man of God has heard from God and he's given me what exactly that I need in this hour to help build me up, to help mold me. If we, either we're we going to get that word with joy and go back and do something with it or we're going to reject it. And you can reject it before you even leave out of the door right there. Because we talk, I just gave you three definitions. Revelation, interpretation, and perspective. And that perspective is what most, what most people in the churches are, 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 are dwelling on. I, I, you know, and that, and, that, and that, I'm not giving you my opinion, I'm giving you my testimony of me talking to different people, to the body of Christ, because this is what I talk about. You know, this is what I talk I don't talk about anything else when I do talk to people. And anybody who know me, they know this right here. So this is not my opinion that I'm giving. I'm giving you what I hear. You know, I'm not blind. Pastor was just saying a minute ago, we can't be blind. The devil put it right in front of us, and we won't even see it. He puts it right in front of us. For conviction of sin, for correction of error, and restoration, for, restoration to obedience. That means the word of God is supposed to challenge it's supposed to build us up, and it's supposed to put us on the right track of being aligned back into God's will. Not our will, God's will. But in order for that to happen, we have to change our perspective. Can we go to that next scripture, brother? And, 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 and the proof of it is, for God forbid, I'm sorry, that's Romans 3 and 4. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sin, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So, I got the two on that, bro? Okay. Well, that's going back to what I was just saying. Let God be true. If God's word is the truth, it shouldn't matter who get up here and say what. If God's word is true, then we're going to abide by what the word of God say over uh, opinion, over uh, your perspective over anything. He said, let his word be true. Let his word be true. So when we get in front of our peers, or we get in front of our family member, we should still always walk on the truth, as the leading lady was just saying. We should always want to walk on the truth. When you walk on the truth, then that's what it's going to look like around you. It's going to look like these front three rows around you when you're walking on truth, because you're not going to be in. You're going to always try to make certain that the people around you are lined up in the same way. But the church, I, I, even, I even hear pastors say, that's lonely. And I'm saying to myself, I'd rather be in this position to be lonely than to be in that crowd and don't, and don't know who I am. You, we, we, gonna, we want a crowd of people around of us that we trying to, uh, uh, everybody giving this fake love. This fake love, everybody want to love. Oh, I, that's so wonderful that you're doing. You, you lying. You really don't feel that way. You say any words out of your mouth, but you really don't feel that way. These are words, these are uh, dry words that are coming out of people's mouth. And, and when I hear pastors say that, I'm looking like, man, we can't do that. No, you don't want to show people away. But if a person trying to make you and pull you back into a lifestyle that goes against the truth, that goes against the word, then it, I would rather for me to be around this hill than to have you in my presence and, and you draining me. You spiritually draining me, not physically, but then it can't away physically too because they now they pour everything out of them on you. So now it's come from a spiritual to a physical drain to where you're always tired and you wonder why uh, spiritually we you know we we, we just walking around like I, I ain't gonna say zombies, but we almost in that in that place that we in a place of dryness, dryness. So I'm, I'm gonna give you two. I'm gonna give you two uh, points that I want to point to. Whereas when we this condition this that started, this condition started <laughs> back in the tour with Moses and the people of Israel. So can we go to Exodus um, 33, verse one through six? And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou. And the people which thou have brought up out of the land of Egypt unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, 
and to Jacob, saying unto thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, and the Havite, the Havite and the Jebusite. Until <laughs> a land flowing with milk and honey, for I, I, will, I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art still people, lest I consume thee in the way. And when the people heard the ev these evil tidings, they mourned, and no man did put on his ornaments. Now I want to go back to read verse 5 in the Amplified. For the Lord said, For the Lord said unto Moses, saying unto the children of Israel, You are a stiff necked people. I will come up in the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore now put off ornaments from thee that I may know what to do unto thee. So we're talking about a, a condition in the church. Here there Moses leading the Israelites. And the people, we, we know it, we know what was going on back then, that the more the more God showed who he was, the more they did, the more they deterred and wanted more and and and, 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 and in, in a sense were rejecting. No faith in did God bring us over here to die? You know, it, it, it was nothing that God could do to show the people that they will receive. And he's speaking through the man of God to tell them. Now here it is, we come back in our present day time. This is how I, this is how I, I, I bring it to life and the Lord bring it to life to me. I'm looking now and I look at the church now where the man of God is ministering, the man, the woman, whoever is up here is ministering the word and is telling us how to, how to overcome, how to, how to get out of Egypt, how to, get, how, to, how to put our feet on the solid ground, how to grow more toward the Lord but our perspective over what the word of God is saying makes us a stiff-necked people. Right. And people don't want, it, it, it makes us a rebellious. Now, it makes us a rebellious, it say a rebellious stiff-necked people. Stubborn. Rebellion, stiff-necked, and stubborn. In the body of Christ, in the church. We're talking about the church, the condition of the church. And what we see with people, well, the word of God is none effect. Well, I don't have, I, I don't have to come to the church, but we still say, I don't have to do the word, but we still say, and then we'll get it when we fold to be the church, and we be in agreement with people that saying that. Well, we know what the word, so we gonna exclude the word because they read the Bible. The, the devil know the Bible. That's right. That don't mean because we know, we know the Bible that we are. Following the one that called out. We are the call, we supposed to be the call out ones. And being the call out one, we supposed to be the ones that go back in the world and be the light to a dying world. They're looking for the light. They are looking for answers. They, they're not in this group that's lost. They're not in the well, they are in the group that's lost. But we are in that group, and where we supposed to be shining, we lost with them. Because we refuse to stand on what the word of God say because we have become stiff-necked, rebellious, and stubborn. And that is not, that is not what, when Moses was leading the people, that is not what God intended. I got one more. Let's go to the next one, brother. Job, verse 2, 3 to, three to 10. Well, Pastor kind of started talking about Job. I said, Lord, Pastor said everything. No, I don't know what to say. I got to go behind. He, he gave me confirmation, but I got to go behind him. My God. <laughs> you know. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is no one like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feared God and skewed, skewed evil. And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although Thou movest me against him to destroy him with thy cause. Ain't, ain't there something y'all hear, y'all hear the, the last scripture where God said he will consume him or destroy? When, when people start hearing God talk like that, like God and change. That he will, he will destroy and he was consuming the evil of this world. The wickedness. He was, he was, everything that he built was good, but when sin came in, you know, even God himself, uh, almost, well he did, 
He destroyed the first word. He destroyed it. But when you start hearing people talking about how God is going to destroy and God kill, where is God wrong? It's his creation. <laughs> he, can, he can put his hand and do whatever he choose to do. He, he, the way he do it, the way man do it is totally different. He's removing the, the, the castle. He's removing the castle. He's trying to remove the castle. But the people are stiff necked and wicked, stubborn. And say to answer the Lord, and say, skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Skin for skin, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. <laughs> and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with some with sore balls from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a posture to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Do thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. <laughs> so ain't that something right there, y'all? Ain't that something? But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. <laughs> what? Shall we, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Huh. Ain't that some you know, confirmation what Pastor was talking about, Job? A righteous man that, that God allowed Satan to attack. See the church, the church, the condition of the church is not right. Pastor, we just went through this here. The condition of the church, if Satan attacks, they don't know what a spiritual attack is. They, they're thinking of spirit attack. Well, I don't know my job. Well, you might want to late. <laughs> they, don't, they don't make it a spirit attack because you lost your job. What you were doing to make you lose your job. But, but they, they don't want to look at it like that. They want to say, but that's a spiritual attack. No, nah, you might want to do what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be got fired. You know, but a spiritual attack. Here the job allows Satan to do all that he want to do to him. And do all of that. Job never, never mumbled a word against God. Even his wife came up and told him, you still trying to retain your integrity. You need to curse God. So now I'm going to bring it back again how I see it, the way I look at it, and, and not my perspective, but my interpretation of what the scripture said, because it's going to line up with what he's saying. I believe that anything that go on in my life, when I call COVID, I never questioned God why I caught it. I always said, well, the Lord allowed it to happen to me, then it was for a reason. But then you would take some brothers, but you ain't died this time. You're not God. You're not God to tell me that I didn't die this time. You know, but if everything happened. They think that if you get attacked like that, it's not a spiritual attack. You caught this. So when is Satan going to attack? How does he attack? If he can't attack you to pull you away from, you, you, if, you, if your mindset is made up that you're going to serve God and you're not following the crowd, you don't care what, you have been delivered from this lifestyle, you're not going back to this lifestyle, then how else is Satan going to attack? If God allow him to attack, can you endure the attack that Satan do? Is you going to turn or is you going to start, oh man, I'm going through something right here. I don't know what it is. But in the midst of when I had COVID, Lee and lady were calling me. And it dawned on me while I was laying there one morning. I said, Lord, what is this? And he answered quick, spiritual attack. I said, surely. Lee and lady been calling me, telling me. I started quoting the scriptures. I started speaking back to the word. The next morning, my wife kept coming there. You got to get up. I couldn't get up. I didn't, I, I didn't have physical strength. And I was spiritually wounded. I'm going to say I was wounded because I wasn't down. Because I was down, I wouldn't be able to go back to it. But I was wounded that I didn't know that it was an attack. But when I asked the Lord, and he told me what it was, and I remember what leading lady was telling me that I need to be doing, I started doing that. And the next morning, I said, Lord, it's time for me to get up. And I got up immediately. 
where I, whereas I couldn't walk to the front door. I not only walked to the front door, but I started walking around the house and just praising and worshiping God because the attack that he had on me, it was an attack on my mind and it was an attack on my body. I couldn't think and I couldn't hear. I had the word praying, but I, it was just playing. I was, I was just, it's, it's like I was just seeing through it. So I knew this had to be a spiritual attack. But then I go to talk to some brothers and sisters in the faith, and the first thing they tell me, well, you ain't died this time. COVID is not going to kill me. But if, even if the Lord allow it to happen, to be absent from the body, I know where I'm going to be. I'm not, I'm not one of the ones that wonder and don't know where my faith is going to lie at, that if I do lose my life, because I gave my life up. I'm not trying to keep my life. I'm trying to live the best life that he has presented before me for him, allow him to live through me that whoever I come in the in path of, I'm able to show them the light of how he has changed my life. I don't think that I've missed, I don't think my prayer is that, Lord, if I miss it, at the end of that day, he always come back, I said, I showed him. You know, and I, and I hear I do that, but I do miss it. But Job, here it is that Job that went through all of this right here. But we have the condition of the church that, that feel that if nothing we save and everything is going to be glorious. That is, that is not true. And if, if, if Satan is not on your trail, if you're not trying to make sure that Satan is not working in your house, if you're not trying to make sure that everything is aligned in you, is, if is you leaning toward the truth, which is the word of God, if you're not trying to make certain that the path that you own is God's path and not your own path, because like Pastor, like, like Pastor was saying earlier this morning with, through the revelation, it, everything that's evil, even going to work out for your good. It's going to work for your good either way it goes. You will a child of God. So it had, he said in his word. All things work for the good of them that love him. So it's got to be a point of no matter what you go through in this life, give thanks. Because you're going to go through some things. But the condition of the church don't want to believe that that still can take place. That still happened today. Spiritual attacks happen all the time. You can be doing a spiritual attack against somebody that don't even realize by the things that you may say. You may not be trying to be hurtful. But you can let someone come out your mouth that can, can hurt a person that may be fragile in that area that you may have said something. So we have to be making sure that everything that, that, that come out of our mouth, it'll be aligned up with what's true. And that is the word of God. That our condition, that our perspective on how we see a certain thing is, is, is lined up with truth and interpretation and not with an opinion. Because if we line everything that we are saying with opinion, then what Joel went through, nobody in the church, we, the church has created God to be like a genie. God just blessing everything. Oh, God bless me. Right? He didn't even even studying God. Papa had a script in the I seen that script in the morning. I said, my God, it's the dead. The dead. And he's he not talking about the physical, but the spiritual. They don't praise God. So that kind of killed that scenario where God hear all the sin of prayer, but they dead. They, they, this is what the church is going to have to make. We, we are going to have to align ourselves with the word of God and not allow people's perspective of other people. I, I hear, I have seen evangelists that are not a member. They, they, they go to a church, but they're not active in the church. Everybody looking for uh, uh, what you call this? They looking for a place to be to where people can listen to them. They looking for a platform, and everybody try. Now they will tell you, you ain't got to go to the church, but yet they got a platform that they trying to get you to be on their platform. The condition of the church. This is the condition of the church. They got a word. They they trying to tell you. They trying to oh uh, your pal. But they don't want you to go listen to the man of God that you say God put you over. God put you here. But then they'll, they'll come on Facebook and they'll, oh, I'm just waiting for people to come on. You wait, you got you waiting for the same people to come on so you can 
minister, open up the Bible and minister to them, but then they shouldn't be at a church. They shouldn't be doing this here at a building. Come on, we're talking about the condition of the church. This is what's going on. This is real. So we're going to have to make our mind up that either this is going to be true. Either the word of God is going to be true and every man be a liar or we're going to keep our perspective and we're going to keep on getting with people that are going to keep on doing it and pulling us as, 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 the, as the, the, the diagram that they gave us that always in the tug of war pull. You got, they pulling this away. Well, my family, oh, I just love my family so much. I don't want to tell my family the truth or anything. I'm just going to, I just love y'all. But then you got these people over here. Oh, they're going to hell over here. But they're doing the same thing. Come on, come on. Don't nobody want to tell the truth. They're doing the same thing they're doing over here. But they're going to hell, but this is my family. We're talking about the truth. If we're going to be, if we're going to tell lead people the truth, then we definitely got to tell lead people the truth. Because these are the ones you say, I always tell, bro, if you love me, tell me the truth. Don't lie to me. Because if you, if you don't tell me the truth, and I know you, I, I know you, look, I know what I need to hear. And if you don't say it, then I'm definitely not going to have these kind of conversations with you. Because I know you're not going to be a truthful man. I need, the pe I need the people that's in my circle to tell me the truth. Because I'm going to tell you if you're wrong. But we try to save their life by we loving them like, but we love them with a lie. And then we come over here and we see the people that... We want to minister to these kind of people. <laughs> we want to minister to the poor, the what we look like may be the poor spirited people, but then we choosing over here not to say anything to our family, to our loved ones, you know. So how is it? How can we do that and say that we stand on the truth that the word of God is our final authority over our life? If the word is the final authority, then it shouldn't matter who. It shouldn't matter. It, it, my wife, if my, if my wife wrong, I'm going to tell my wife she's wrong. And we're going to talk about, we're going to have a long conversation about it. I'm going to tell you scripture, we, and she's going to tell me the same. It, I can't allow her, and she can't allow me. We can't fall back into the a old way of just letting things go. No, we got we to gotta make, we gotta make certain that we are one. That the decisions that we make is, you know, my thing is, every decision that we make is it benefits, it got to benefit us. It can't, f for the kingdom. Because I'm not running behind money and stuff. I, I, when, I, when I gave my life to the Lord, I'm on a job now where I don't make what I used to make. And I always tell the guys, it's not about the money. You seeing it that way because you're in a, you in a world of state. And, and the money and the things of this world is what drawing you, driving you. But it's not about that. Cause I had that, and I, st I had that, and I had a home, and I had cars, and I had everything, and I ain't want none of it. So it can't be about that. But when I come here, and and I get the joy of being able to talk about the one that called me out, the one that chose me and set me on a solid foundation, that is the joy that I would rather have than the stuff. I, I, the stuff don't make no sense. I, I look, and I'm like, man, Lord, help him. You know, you want. My heart desire, I, I want to help people. I want to look. You're going down a path. You don't even open the, you don't even understand the door that you open over relationship. You don't understand the door that you are opened up. We're talking about the condition of the church. All of this still tied to what I'm saying because we have changed the perspective over the word. We have changed our perspective and not receive the truth, but receive an opinion. You're going to talk to this brother, but this brother may not be walking on truth. And everything he gives you going to be a worldly answer. It's going to go against everything that the truth says. And that gonna, now that's going to make you like, well, you might be right now. He ain't right. If it ain't lined up with the word, he can't be right. But your perspective on how you see it, you have to, you, we have to align that perspective with the interpretation of the word so it, it can become true and not be someone's opinion. And the, the cost of the call, I know I had a second part. The cost of the call, uh, uh, Matthew 16, verse 24 through 25. When we start, you know, the condition of the church was that it was stubborn, stiff-necked, <laughs> rebellious.
stubborn, stiff neck, rebellious. And we look at Job that nothing, we, we, we don't supposed to go through anything. It, our life supposed to be uh, uh, peaches and cream. Everything's supposed to be happy in the body of Christ. You know, we supposed to be just joyous all the time. And, you know, uh, if, if we ain't joyous all the time, that's a lie. Because you're going to go through some now, it shouldn't take your joy away. But if you go and you had a bad day, you had a bad day. <laughs> if you had the day was a man, bro, call me, Jim, how your day was, man? But God be the glory. You know, I ain't going to complain about it. I always tell but I ain't going to complain about it, but man, you know. But the joy of the Lord. It, we, we, we do not afford to lose our joy. As Joel went through everything that he went through, he didn't lose nothing. He never cursed God. He never spoke up. He, out of all the people, family, his wife, his friends, everybody, everything coming up against him. He lost everything. He lost everything. But he never turned his way from God. He always he kept his mind, he kept his mind and his eyes on the hill. He kept looking up to God through all that he went through. Then Jesus said to his disciple, if anyone desire, desires to be my disciple, let, let him deny himself. Disregard, this is the amplified version, y'all. Disregard, lose sight of, and forget himself and his own interests. And take up his cross and follow me. Cleave steadfastly to me. Conform wholly to my example in living, and if need be dying also. Hold up, bro. Let me go back right there. And, and, and go back to the next one. Let him deny himself, disregard, lose sight of, and forget himself and his own interests. And take up his cross and follow me. This is the state that Jesus left the church. This is, this is the example that when he came down on the earth, this is the example that he left to his disciples. I don't know if people know they're a disciple. They're supposed to be. We're supposed to be conforming to that disciple. We're supposed to be that. We, we call out one. We're supposed to be that. But I don't even, the church don't even know that right. They, then you have some say, well, yeah, I know it. You know it. And your lifestyle. <laughs> My God, disregarding ourself. Forgetting our own interests. That, that means that we putting ourselves aside for forsaking. We forsaking our own self for anybody that don't know the Lord. Our own interests. And taking up our cross and following. I ain't saying that we don't support. I'm not saying that we don't supposed to live. I'm saying that scripture is saying that we forgot to forget ourselves. What in the midst of what's going on in front of us. Um, we had we 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 had a brother that called and said they had you know death I, with death in the family, death in the family. That's one of the that's one of the things that as a believer is the most important time in your life, and especially if you're the only believer there, that's the most important time for you to really shine. Let the Lord use you because you got all these people you know that ain't saved. And they and they meeting up at these at, at these family houses that you can pop up and and go over and uh they 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 hurting that you can be you that's the opportunity to minister. That's the that's the that's that is the greatest opportunity to minister because they in a dark place. They finna get drunk. A drunk man don't, a drunk man don't lie. I know people say, well, I don't want to talk to the nah, witness to him because he ain't gonna lie. And you can talk to that spirit and tell them, well, you can't lie because you're drunk. He's going to tell you everything that you need to know. I know this right here because I done dealt with that. A drunk man cannot lie. So when we start ministering to that drunk man, you're going to get the truth. Whoever in the midst of that crowd is going to hear what, it, what God needs to be said at that, amount, at that point in time, that whatever, you, whatever that person is going through, God is going to speak to you to be able to give that person what they need that may draw them out of that darkness at that moment right there. That if we being his disciple and we denying ourselves, it, that 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 we not getting there and we losing sight of who what the purpose that he got us there. 
Because there is a purpose even in death. There is a purpose even in death that God has us there to be able to uh, uh, achieve his, his will. Amen. His purpose. Amen. Come on, brother. I'm sorry. For, whatever, for whoever is bent on saving his temporal life, who, for whoever is bent on saving his temporal life, his comfort and security here shall lose it, eternal life. And whosoever loses his life, his comfort and security here, for my sake, shall find, find it life everlasting. So here we are again. We talk, it's still, it's a cost, but the condition of the church, if we look around, is not there. The condition of the church is not there, whereas we're trying to save our life. We're trying to save everything that, that's going around us. And, and, you know, if Cobra Bryant can come back right now, Cobra Bryant tell that man to put that plane back down. Because Cobra Bryant left millions on the table. He left houses and companies, and he, lost, he left all of this stuff back that he couldn't take with him. Retired one year, died the next year, millions of dollars. So, as one of my friends, I always say that there is no U-Haul following the hearse. Only, only a hearse and the corpse or, the, or, the, or the, the, the person that is in that sad position right there. So, saving our life, our temporal life, the things that, the money, the things that are temporal that you're going to make it and you're going to spend it. You know, I, I can recall myself that Whatever I wanted to do when I, was, when I was an unbeliever, whatever that I chose to do, whatever the goal that I set, I went at it at all costs. The initiative that I had as an unsaved person is the same initiative that I supposed to bring in the kingdom of God. That whatever, at all costs, whatever it takes, I want to be able to share who the Lord is in my life, share what the Lord has done in my life, that I may be the testimony, because we, they say we overcome by the word of our testimony, our testimony. So I want to be able to show or uh, 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 share my testimony with persons or people that's trying to save their life with these temporal things. Even my family, these temporal things. And, and the more I say it's temporal, the more they run behind. And I look, I say, oh, I did that too. But it's temporal. That, them seeds that we sow, we don't think about them seeds that we be sowing. Them, them seeds that we sow will come back. Them seeds that we sow come back, and they come back harder when they come up. So I was the one who was running behind them temporary things. I was the one who was trying to enjoy what I felt like was the best life. But I was losing my life. In Christ, if we lose our life for his sake, we have security. We have security. And I know, you know, as, as, as being a part of the church and being a part of the body, that is the security that we are all supposed to be driving for. The everlasting security that when we see him, and he can say, well, John, my good and faithful servant, and not running behind the temporal thing that's not everlasting. Brother, that, is that it on that? Yeah, one more scripture. Come over there, though. Ephesians, I'm sorry, everybody. Ephesians 2, 18 through 22. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, for, now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grow into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom, you are, in whom ye are also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. So, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. If Jesus Christ is the cornerstone, you know what a cornerstone, your cornerstone holds up, he is the foundation. And if everything is fitted together on that foundation, then there is no way that foundation, is that if the church... Is, is the cost, is paying the cost, if we paying the cost of the call, 
that we are walking and following him, there's no way that we can fall. There's no way that we can fail. It's only when we, it's only when we go back to that first one, the condition is where we put ourselves not being in that, on that cornerstone right there. Because when we're in that condition, our perspective of the truth has changed. So we cannot be in the condition where we on this side right here and our perspective want to line up with the truth because the truth is on this side. He is the cornerstone. He is the holding up everything, the, everything, the frame, the foundation of our, the foundation of who we are is aligned with Jesus Christ. And if we, we have to, as a church, have to realize either we over here, whereas <laughs> we over here in this part where we are, <laughs> Lord help me. We're trying to figure out the condition that we in. We have to see the condition that we in as being believers so we can get over here and be with the Lord and be the, on the chief corner, him being the chief cornerstone, holding everything, fitting it, tightening it together, and holding the body up. Because if we don't have the truth, then everything else we have is a lie. If we don't have the truth, then everything, if we don't stand on the truth, everything else is a lie. If the word is the truth, we have to stand on the word. Regardless of who it is, regardless of what the, what the preacher might be saying, if it's not true, we don't stand on it. In order for you to know that, you got to be in truth. <laughs> you, everything, everything about us had to, had to rely on truth, not our perspective. So I just thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for your time. Uh, I pray that it was a blessing.